What's the most dangerous food you've ever eaten? Accidentally ate a poisonous mushroom on vacation when I was 5. I was non-responsive and ended up in the hospital for a couple of days. To clarify, we had gotten a basket full of mushrooms from some friendly locals for dinner. None of them were poisonous, except the one I ate. Nobody knew it was poisonous, until I didn't react to anything later that night, when I was already laying in bed. I survived the destroying angel, Cornell mushroom blog account of someone eating the destroying angel mushroom, and being lucky to have survived. Mushrooms can take a while to hurt you with their poison. I've read there are even ones that can take a week plus. Scary, I usually assume, if I make it 48s on something questionable, not sure while deadables, that I'm fine. I've only really messed with easy to identify ones like chicken mushroom, letiporus, and pheasant back, cereoporus squamosus. I'd like to add more easy ones like oysters, chanterelles, and morals. Mushrooms in particular make me nervous though. Some that kill you, you won't even know it right away. By the way guys, if you are enjoying this video so far, don't forget to like this video, and subscribe to the channel. It will help us out quite a bit, and if you don't enjoy the videos in the future anymore, you can always unsubscribe. Let's get back to the video. Turns out, I'm allergic to apples. What about when they are cooked? I know some people are only allergic to raw apples due to an enzyme that they have that only exists while raw, but that breaks down when cooked. Oral allergy syndrome. No one believes that you can be allergic to apples. Edit. I'm really happy that I was able to inform some people about themselves. I only found out what it was called when I was in my early 20s, and it was so satisfying to finally have a name to put with it. Yes, I have this, and react to, so many kinds of raw fruit, but not always and not when it's cooked, frozen is ify. If that doesn't sound like some fake made up I don't know what does. Every time I go to the dentist, or whatever and they ask about allergies I have to try and explain it to them. They're just like uh, I need the actual fruits you're allergic to, I can't put that all on the form. So I just tell them cherries, because that's the only test that came back positive. Although my allergist told me that happens a lot with those, because the test fruit is processed, and you need to test with raw fruit to get an accurate result, but I'm too poor to buy that much fruit for the test. It's extra confusing for people when they see me eating one of the fruits I've said I'm allergic to, but my allergist said it was fine to try a bite, wait 5 minutes, and keep eating, if I don't react, since the level of proteins that I react to vary between each individual fruit. I've been accused of faking a lot of times, but I've got a just in case EP pen now so showing them, that usually convinces them it's real. Only then they get all concerned that I'm risking my life for a peach. Frustrating how people can't trust that I know my own condition and how to handle it better than they do. Methyl sulfonyl methane or MSM. It's a dietary supplement that some people take to treat joint issues. My Phil was taking it and wanted me to try it because it has a very peculiar taste. He gave me a spoon that probably only had one slash eight dash one slash forty spoon of the powder on it. I took it, tasted it, it was very bitter, and swallowed. Within a few minutes my throat began to swell, I had some tightness to my chest and some wheezing plus some hives a while later. I had started into anaphylaxis. Luckily it didn't proceed too far. That's how I discovered I was allergic to sulfur and or sulfur compounds. It's also what I joke about with my Phil, the time he tried to kill me for marrying his daughter. I once got a concerning abscess on my thigh. I was around 23 at the time. Not having insurance my friend who had recently had a staph infection and didn't finish his antibiotics gave me the rest of his. I took one. Throat tightened, but not too bad, but I got the worst headache I've ever had in my life and my neck felt like it was in a vice grip, like it was being crushed. I got extremely tired, like I felt, like I had been drugged, but couldn't fall asleep due to the pain. Was late for work had extreme nausea, got to work, explained things to my co-workers. Had to sit in the office for a minute. 
started to take another when a coworker walked in to check on me and grabbed my hand and asked what I was taking. Told her antibiotics, she grabs the bottle and tells me some people are allergic to sofa based antibiotics. I call my mom to ask her if I'm allergic, she tells me yes, duh, you're an idiot. She's never informed me of this in my life, ever. So that's how I found out, and how my mom and future boyfriend tried to murder me. Chicken a friend of mine made. She thought if you can eat a steak medium rare, it would be fine to marinate chicken, call it a chicken steak, and eat it medium rare. A friend of mine told me they roasted a chicken in the microwave for an hour and a half, and ate it with family. They are still alive to this day somehow. I mean at the end of the day, a microwave is just a box to heat food in. Not saying it'll make a nice roast chicken, but it'll do it. I know my microwave came with accessories for cooking stuff like roast chicken, and we're not talking about some fancy microwave here, just a 40 pound <laughs> tier 1 from Argus. Back in the day, I think the microwave was seen as legitimate competition for conventional ovens, that didn't really happen on a large scale thankfully, but I bet they're really convenient for people who don't need a huge <laughs> oven. For instance lives alone in a tiny flat. If you have a microwave, where you can turn down the power setting, it wouldn't necessarily make rubbery chicken. The problem is most consumers microwaves stay at maximum out power, because these days, most people use it to quickly reheat food. You would need to add a decent amount of liquid to the dish you're cooking it in though, so the chicken doesn't dry out. The amount of times I've almost choked to death on an extra cheesy mozzarella stick is ridiculous. After too many times of being afraid I might literally die due to a mozzarella stick, I'm the weirdo that uses a knife and fork to eat mine, so I can get it down to tiny pieces. My front teeth don't perfectly line up to create a good bite through the moz, so I had to turn to tools, haha. <laughs> I thought I was the only one. You just made me feel better about myself. Thank you. I have never been able to relate to a comment more in my life. My husband still holds a grudge against his younger brother, because he's the reason why they weren't allowed to order mozzarella sticks when they went out to eat. Apparently as a child, his brother was a very enthusiastic eater. Unfortunately, he was also notorious for his prolific vomiting. Every time he got his hands on mozzarella sticks, he would hawk them down, inevitably gag on half melted cheese, and throw up. Every time. Bananas. Apparent I'm allergic to them, and didn't know for the first 28 years of my life. My daughter was describing how bananas make her throat itchy and that's when my wife told me that wasn't normal, still love them, I'm just a bit more careful as to how many I consume. Found out I had a mild allergy to bananas when I was in my mid-twenties. Made a comment to my BF, now hubby, how it was weird that bananas made the roof of your mouth itch when you eat them. He was like WTF are you talking about? So yeah, that was an odd realization. Edit, wow, my first award. Thank you. My cousin is the same way. Banana makes her mouth and tongue itch and the whole family has tried to convince her that she's allergic, but she keeps insisting that she can't be allergic to bananas because she eats them all the time. Oral allergy syndrome. Basically it's a mild reaction in your mouth since the fruit is distantly related to something else you're actually allergic to, but not bad enough to stop you eating it, or cause any problems. I get it with bananas, tomatoes, oranges, and a handful of other things. The actual allergies I have are hay fever, especially Timothy hay I get this with bananas, and melon it's the pollen content. It's sad, because I'm sure those things would taste great, if they didn't make my mouth itch. Cooked bananas, like banana chips or banana bread, are totally fine for me, though. The last piece of my wife's fancy sea salt chocolate bar. I know exactly the chocolate bar of which you speak. It's rumble time over that last piece. Once I had an expensive bar of chocolate that I was eating as my only non-fruit, vegetable whole grain, low-fat dairy, legume dietary item which I hid, and someone found it, and ate the entire thing, when I was halfway through it. To this day I have never been able to obtain another bar of such fine chocolate. 
it was a gift from my relative in Europe, posted thousands of miles to me through customs, and sent with a letter telling me about the place it was from. Do you know anything about the chocolate? We might be able to help you track it down. This was 10 years ago, and they threw away the wrapper, or I would've tried to order more online at the time. All I know, is that it was from Belgium. I couldn't tell my relative what became of their generous gift, in order to get more information than that. I couldn't tell my relative what became of their generous gift, in order to get more information than that. You could just ask them what kind it was, and if they knew how to place an order directly through the company, that makes them for international shipping. It's not like they are going to say why. Don't you still, have that chocolate I gave you a decade ago? Is something wrong? What happened? Gyrometra esculenta. Poisonous mushroom that can be lethal, if not parboiled correctly, but I trust my mom. She makes amazing mushroom sauce from them. One of the best thing I've eaten. I always wonder, how things like that are discovered. Presumably many years ago some guy ate one of those raw, and died from it. People with him saw this and said okay, don't eat those mushrooms, because they will kill you. Then some absolute madman says, but if we cook it first it might not kill us. And that's before we get to parboiled correctly, so I assume this means that parboil incorrectly, or fried slash other cooking method means it's still lethal. Was there someone taking notes like Bob ate the raw one and died, Jim ate the fried one, and died etc you get the idea. Might just be different cultures. Maybe one culture always boiled just happened to boil, that and be fine. Another culture didn't and feared it. Then, they met and when the boiling culture was about to eat it, the other one was like no don't eat that it'll kill you. But the boiling culture was like what, we been eating this for decades. Cashew bar. Didn't know your tongue could itch. Or that you could feel your throat closing up. First time I cried in front of my mom in years. That was a shock to me too. Turns out ground cashew has used a lot of baked goods. And god forbid we find any store brand trail mix aside from the Cajun flavor that won't kill me. Pistachios too for me, which is a shame, because they are delicious for the first 30 seconds, until my body decides I just made it eat poison. Yup, cashews and pistachios are in the same plant family as poison ivy, the Anacardiaceae. Other familiar species include sumac and mangoes. Many of these species are capable of producing erushil, the allergenic compound. Yep I'm allergic to mangoes, cashews and pistachios. It sucks since mango is a huge fad right now, and places are putting it in everything. The irony is that poison ivy doesn't really do much to me. Just a really minor redness without much irritation. I guess the lesson is, to not eat it. This one time I had a turkey sausage and I guess I was allergic to something in it, because my lips swelled so big I looked like a botched lip filler surgery victim. I ended up going to the hospital and now I carry an epipen. So you never found out. And do you think it could be that casing, since it is a sausage? No I never found out what it was, I suppose it could have been the casing. But would that be any different than the meat itself having both, I assume, produced from the same animal? I'm no chef expert, but, the casing is usually made of pork. Edit, you might want to go get checked for food allergies. I should have specified, that they were halal turkey sausages, so they definitely did not contain pork. Edit to respond to edit above, I have been tested for allergies a few times and I have a severe birch allergy, but had no significant food allergy was observed. The prevailing medical explanation is, that a bad infection I was suffering at the time and the antibiotics I was taking contributed to an overreactive antihistamine reaction. A good ol omelette. For some reason eggs give me a bad case of <laughs> like cake or pie or meringue are fine, but a boiled or fried egg? It'll spend 3 hours blasting my But once every few years I'd get egg cravings, commit a crime of passion, and proceed to regret it so so much. I have the exact same issue with milk. But once every other month like clockwork, I'll give in and just mash a bowl of cocoa puffs, and then make sure I have mobile game or a book, that I'm really into and just hunker on down in the basement bathroom. Ready for what follows.
You. You get it. I know it's risky business, even weirder because sometimes I risk an egg and don't get a stomach ache. But sometimes I take that risk, because I'm a simple man, and I cannot resist the cheesy barely cooked eggy goodness of a plate of spaghetti carbonara. Even if my stomach starts humming the Jaws theme, while I'm still eating to announce the raging diarrhea that's surely coming, I know I went down doing what I loved. Being lactose intolerant is weird. I can eat an entire pizza and carton of ice cream and be fine, but a cup of milk and it's game over. Those round red and white striped mints they give out at some restaurants. Choked so bad my dad had to stop the car on our way home and check if I was alright. Then my parents banned me from eating those for a few years. Oh and a few years ago while eating sushi, I accidentally ate a big chunk of wasabi, I didn't see it on my chopsticks. My lips swelled up so much I'm sure the Kardashians world have been jealous. This almost happened again on Saturday. Oh god, wasabi can be a killer. My old boy was sent to Japan for work back in the 90s and got caught in the trap. We were a family from rural QLD where the most exotic foods you could find were Mongolian beef and honey chicken at the one Chinese restaurant in town. Otherwise it was fish and chips or pub food. He got a big promotion and we moved to the city, but part of that was a work trip to Japan to meet with some investors to seal the promotion. They all went out to dinner, and he was amazed by the array of different foods he never knew existed. Trying his way around the table, he picked up a glob of green stuff he assumed was avocado and he reckoned he damn near died when it hit his nose. It's been over 20 years, but if we are getting together at a sushi place, almost always someone will ask if anyone wants some spicy avo. That sucks, the closest thing to wasabi I have eaten are wasabi chips, they are quite spicy. Not the spiciest thing I have eaten, but is pretty good. I imagine actual wasabi would be a lot worse. Fermented shark. The taste itself was enough to make my stomach quiver, but worse were the flavor burps that lasted for 2 days, that no amount of toothpaste slash mouthwash could destroy. I just don't get why you or anyone would think fermented shark would be anything but gross. So my husband and I tried it on our honeymoon in Iceland. We tried it because that's basically the only place in the world we'd try it and it's a traditional food there. The guy who is us tried told us to imagine it being like a super funky cheese. I had an immediate gag reaction, as soon as it hit my tongue my body said it absolutely wasn't food. However my husband, while it's not a thing he just snacks on, didn't think it was bad. But he also liked funky cheeses like Limburger. Pineapple. Apparently it's not supposed to make your throat itchy. One Saturday I sliced up a pineapple and my wife and I sat down to watch some TV and we mindlessly ended up eating the entire thing. We soon after started experiencing some pretty bad tongue pain like being stabbed by thousands of tiny needles in your tongue. Now we don't binge eat pineapple anymore. When you eat pineapple, the pineapple eats you back. Fresh pineapple has enzymes that break down human tissue. The canned pineapple doesn't, because the canning process denatured the enzyme. If you want to put pineapple in a jello mold dish, you must use canned. Enzymes in the fresh jello keep it from setting. One of those science experiments you can do with your kid when they tell you that they have a project due the night before. Was that a project you had to do with your kid the night before? Nope, just an option Jay came across. We had several days. In the end, he painted baby food jars with poster paint in black, white, and the primaries, left them in the sun for an hour, then took the temperature of the water in each jar. Tacos from Taco King in New York. I had to get my stomach pumped. I'll never forget the agonizing pain and vomiting that it caused. I had food poisoning from a terrible piece of pizza that had been sitting under a warmer all day at a turnpike oasis on I-80 in Ohio. I don't think I've ever been so sick. I got to my grandma's house and dropped to a knee and threw up right on her carpet. She was nice about it. That had never happened to me before, and never since two days in bed for that one. I felt like I was dying, but the doc said I was okay, just sick as a dog. 
never ever, ever eat a terrible piece of Sparrow's Pizza at an oasis on the turnpike in Ohio. Especially not one purchased at 1am and it's the last piece. Street food from a cart in Bangladesh. Shelled hard boiled eggs held in sun at 35C degree heat and all the creatures you could imagine. To a fen host, or commit to 3 days of gastrofen. When my mum and sister were planning on an extended trip to India, my mum made them follow quite a strict plan of pro slash prebiotics and supplements, etc for about 6 months before they went. My sister thought it was over the top, until she saw what Delhi Belly did to other westerners who were also there on extended trips. Apparently nothing makes you appreciate an overcautious mother quite like witnessing a sunburnt crying Canadian couple squirt liquid all over a packed train car. Is there any way you could elaborate? India is on my husband's list of places to travel, and he really wants to try street food. He has a nine stomach compared to me. I can't handle spicy food, dairy or greasy food, so I feel like I'd die there. Building and maintaining your gut flora before and during traveling abroad can help prevent catastrophically tra- <laughs> and helps reduce their severity slash recovery time if you do get sick. It's not 100% guaranteed to keep your gut safe and happy, but a lot of seasoned travelers like my mum swear by it. I didn't go on the trip myself, so I don't know exactly what supplements they took, or the regime they followed, but I know it was a pro plus prebiotic combo taken before, and during the trip, topped up with lots of fresh yogurt, mmm, mango lassi, when they were there. They didn't get so much as a gut gurgle the whole time, traveling south to north over a month, but historically speaking our family falls on the iron stomach side of things anyway so why mmv? Malrut. I'm pretty sure that is poison. I like malrut a lot, but I have a weird palate, and I completely understand why most people would rather take a punch to the face than drink it. We took a trip to Chicago a few years ago, and it was recommended, with a bunch of smirks and winks, that I try it. So finally we go eat at a gastro pub that served it, and I ordered a shot. The waitress brought it, and stuck around to watch. And everybody was disappointed, because I drank it, and instead of the typical reaction, I just said, hey, I kinda like that. But for anyone curious as to what it tastes like, it's basically like taking some Jajameister, adding some turpentine, then drinking it from a shot glass made of grapefruit peels. A spoonful of cinnamon powder. When I was a kid, a preteen, I did try the cinnamon powder challenge like what's shown on YouTube, thanks AFV, and I thought it's cool to do it, while completely ignoring my mom's and grandpa's warnings. Nearly joked. That was the stupidest challenge I've done, and I was so dumb at this time. I ate about a tablespoon of white Chinese mustard once. Was out to dinner, my friend told me to be careful using the white mustard, I scooped up a giant glob as a joke, he told me, if I didn't eat it, I had no hair on my balls. I don't know why, I never in my life, responded to any dare before or since, but somehow I just couldn't ignore that particular dare. It's not like I think hairy balls is a mark of virility, and I honestly wouldn't want any more hair there than I have already, thank you very much. I still love white mustard, just not by the tablespoonful. I did it too. In 1979, I was 3. My mom made french toast. I climbed up to get to the spice cabinet, I wanted that cinnamon. I still remember that time, I almost ended my own life. I literally remember influencers doing this, and then putting out videos immediately, after telling people not to do it, because it can damage your trachea slash airways. This is the end of the video, thank you guys for staying with me till the end. If you enjoyed watching this, you might as well watch these two, 